He was like, get on the get on the hood of the car. So he starts searching me. One bag of weed dropped in my back pocket. No. And so he pulls the bag of weed out. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, I screamed. I was like, fuck this fucking bitch. She made me grab a bag of weed for her officer. I'm so sorry. Yo, please, yo, just throw it away. Da -da -da -da. He was like, calm down. I was like, he was like, do you have anything in the trunk? And and like he opened up the trunk and searching. There was nothing there. I was like, look here, we just like my girl made me bring her back. We I didn't want to do it, man. And the, while I'm telling him the story, my fucking the coke is falling off my pants. Like the my underwear <laughs> is slipping down. Lucky Boys Podcast. In our area where we grew up, they don't when when they see a white person. Right away, they're like, oh, that's a cop. That's exactly. a cop. And then they want to stay away from them. Yep. And, and so but we you, were you like, you guys did the opposite. Yeah, we did the opposite. We guys, were like, I know this person's like, oh, that, not a fucking cop. That's they, a good customer. They were just smoking weed in a bar and like drinking and they, they fucking rolling on the ground like they're fucked up. You know, that's a customer. You know what I mean? So we just uh, changed our tar target market and wasn't scared of, you know, ever, the myth was like, and, and back in the day, anybody that came up to you, you know, was probably a cop, you know, growing down here, growing up here. And, um, you know, I, I just I just knew they were not fucking cops because they were little kids. Like, they were, you know, they were young, kids, you young, and they were all fucked up, you know, so. You know, actually, I don't know. I've seen some cops that look like, super young. Like 21 they, Jump they look, <laughs> Yeah, they look like teenagers. I've seen some cops. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they, they would have, I guess they were... Undercover or detectives because they had the the necklace back. And so and, and so they that's look, how they look, like I knew. they look like high school kids. A lot of the times they would have the beads. They would change, you know. And I've I've been approached so many times by undercover cops with the bead with the with the chain because mm -hmm. I know they had they had the the beaded necklaces. Yeah, right? the beaded yeah. the the metal beaded necklaces, and you could tell like, yo, that's a fucking cop. Like, yeah. get the fuck out away from me. Yeah, it's the same one for those of you listening. It's like. Uh, same ones that kind of hold the dog tags. Yeah, like the dog uh, marine yeah. army tags. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's how you would differentiate if you see a beaded necklace. You would kind of know. A couple times I saw that and I was like, Nah, I'm not fucking with this dude. So you noticed like certain things. That's the red flags. Yeah, the red flags. Yeah, there was a few times where there, you know, uh, you remember the cab that was you know, that was like uh, undercover detective. AK forty seven. Yeah, AK forty seven. Yeah, that's the way you saw. It? Yeah, yeah. No, there was like TW forty seven. There was yeah. uh six W. I don't know some shit. Um, yeah. But they, you they know, were, it's them too because it's so blatant. They either have so, the older model cabs, oh, yeah. or they would have the big antennas coming out, or the yeah. or the big lights on the side. Like, dude, yeah, come on, and like, it would you know. creep mad slow. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you have, driving through the parks to you, you know, slow. You know, real <laughs> yellow taxis do not slow down for they sure. Drive yeah. right, they drive right. They cruise on Foresight. I know, <laughs> right? Like, like you're slow, not yeah. picking anybody up <laughs> on Foresight in the yellow cab, and so. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I remember one time like they, they pulled up on a corner of Broom and Aldridge and I'm in the front of the bodega and this lady uh, comes out of their cab in the back of the cab and she's like, hey, do you know where I could score some candy? And I'm like, who the fuck speaks like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be a cop. <laughs> and um, and I saw the fucking cab in the corner and, she, and I was like, yeah, I got you. And, and so I went up to the the. The lady on the counter, I was like, yo, ella, ella necesita candy. <laughs> you know, so I tell her, like, <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh, cho chocolate, Snicker. And, and she was like, no, no, I need like, some, I, I need some drugs. And I was like, oh, I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. And uh, I, I walked out with her and I just see her getting in the fucking back of it. I'm like, yo, oh. this, yo guys are mad fucking obvious, <laughs> yeah. Like, man, hot. Did you ever feel any sense of fear? Uh, for me, I just didn't give a fuck, you know. So it, it was straight up like live young, die young. I, I, I mean, just kind of go hard. I, <laughs> I don't was, care. It like, was so, I wanted to live, yeah, live fast, die young. But I also, I also knew the the repercussions of what I was doing, you know, because I I never had, uh, you know, at certain points I had a lot of work on me. But most of the time, when I was like running around the streets pretty reckless and not really watching my back, I had a little bit of coke on me. You know, and anything under like uh, a eight ball size, 3.5 grams, you'll be charged for it with a misdemeanor. Slap on the wrist. You know, so I knew I was gonna be like, hey, all right, I'll maybe get a like an inpatient drug program or some shit like that. And, you know, I'm done. Um, and so I knew the repercussions and in the law pretty well that I knew that I was like, hey, I, I can't have this amount of work on me or I'm gonna get knocked. Okay, so there, there was some 
thinking going yeah. into it where you felt confident if I get caught, it's not going to be as bad and yeah. I could be right back out and continue my yeah. operations. So you, I guess you were just kind of finding the, the legal loopholes for mm -hmm. the minimum damage. Yep. So that in a way you felt like you were outsmarting the system. Yeah. But there was never a moment where you, as your business started to grow and expand, you didn't think that you, you caught the eye of like the higher ups, like the FBI or, or people investigating. Like I, I, I felt some type of energy like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, there were certain times where I felt it and, and I was right and I should have like trusted my gut and like, you know, and, and dealt with it. But, you know, there was times where I just didn't give a fuck. Like I just, just I, I just thought I was invincible and I was just like, I was unstoppable and, and all the shit. But then there was also like times where I, I'd been stopped. Like I remember going up to Vermont and I had a half a brick on me I have a half a kilo of coke, which would have like got me in the feds. I'm shut down. I'm not coming home for a very long time. It's a lot of weight. Uh, and I got caught in the New York state side uh, crossing over to the bridge. And so I have all this work in my underwear, my boxes. I had, I'm smoking weed in this old fucking car. I have like this like guy next to me that's, you know, we're cold driving and, um, it's like four or five in the morning. We get pulled over because I ran out of fucking gas. There was no gas station. There was no Google. So you don't know where the fucking That's next right. gas That's station. Right. And I remember we're, we're going down like a 25, 30 mile per hour zone. And I was trying to catch all the hills. You know, so I was like turning off the fucking car and like catching a hill. I've been there. <laughs> and just cranking it back you know like and so i'm like oh, trying shit. to push it and uh then at one point it went I, I i did like 40 on a 25 and i get pulled over and i'm like fuck and i had i remember i had like six bags of weed in my back pocket um and i had a eight you remember the avrex jacket yeah i do <laughs> and so uh, I, I had one i pulled the, the the weed and i put it on my sleeve you know because it was thick and so i had a sweater. wait so you had you had the weed in your avrex in, jacket no i had it and, in my back pocket in my back like jean pocket and then you stuffed it into and my, you stuffed it into your avrex jacket uh, yeah in my sleeve of the avrex got like, it. jacket right here so when you felt it, it was like the, the it felt like leather, part of the padding. Yeah, just the padding of the leather. No, did you have like a, a inner zipper in the sleeve, or was it? Oh, mm -hmm. so you just stuffed it loosely. I just stuffed it because I was just like, fuck. If, if I'm gonna get caught, I'm gonna get knocked for like a bag of weed. The dude's gonna make this shit a big deal. I had like I don't know, like six bags of weed or something like that. And so he pulls us in the back of the car. He's like, "What? Where, where are you guys going?" I was like, "Yo, my girlfriend goes to Burlington University. You know, uh, you know." blah 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 uh and and that was the story and then um and he was like why were you speeding i was like we just ran out of gas like da da, da, da. he was like get on the get on the hood of the car so he started searching me one bag of weed dropped in my back pocket no and so he pulls the bag of weed out oh. <laughs> and i'm like Pff. i screamed i was like fuck this fucking bitch she made me grab a bag of weed for her officer i'm so sorry Yo, please, yo, just throw it away. Da, 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 da. He was like, calm down. I was like, he was like, do you have anything in the trunk? And and like he opened up the trunk and searching. There was nothing there. I was like, look here, we just like my girl made me bring her back. We I didn't want to do it, man. And the, while I'm telling him the story, my fucking the coke is falling off my pant, like the my underwear <laughs> is slipping down, sliding to your and shoes. And so I'm like, yo, officer, I need I really need to take a piss. I really need to take a piss. He was like, I go to the fucking bush and pee. And so I go to the back of the tree and I'm just like stuffing the shit, like like making sure it's not coming out of my fucking boxer briefs. And I come out and he's like, yo, I'm, you know, today's your lucky day. I'm just going to write you a ticket for the weed. And he wrote me a ticket and I had to actually drive like six hours north to fucking pay that ticket one day. But it was crazy. But that's it. That was crazy. Yeah. That's the best case scenario. Yeah. I got Dude, so that's like a fucking movie, man. <laughs> Yeah, like so as i'm listening to your story i'm going holy shit like if i'm watching a movie i'm like no oh my gosh like <laughs> had the half a brick of coke oh, that's in my underwear i had like a half a kilo <laughs> can you imagine in that? my underwear and the weed falls walked. out and then the coke falls out <laughs> yeah he's like walking and then just slips out yo it was crazy bro you i got very lucky